Here, you can snap with your juice. Here, you can snap with your juice. Here, you can snap with your juice. Oh, she hit me. Girls are hit boys. It's just the way it is. It's not fair, but it's the way it is. Don't toss things in church. Can I open that? Yeah.
back tonight. We got to uh, Daniel, I think, got a really bad headache this afternoon. And we uh, right with Jim and Carolyn tonight. We uh, helped him this evening. That's our last. We can speak to Brother Ronnie Cannon today. And Brother Ronnie is uh, doing a little bit better. He sounded better. And, uh, he's still on oxygen. He's kind of aggravated with that kind of stuff. Thank you. And having that stuff on me all the time, I can't even imagine. But uh, but thank the Lord, He is doing better. Miss uh, Shirley's doing uh, doing well. She's not really showing any signs or symptoms too much. So we praise the Lord for that. Amen. Uh, so you pray for them. Uh, I pray for Brother Jim and Miss Kim tonight. Uh, their day is done. I'm ready to in bed by now, bro. But uh, we pray for them. The Lord give them a good week this week. The Lord will help them. Continue to pray about the building that we're praying about over in Fortner, where Brother Howard and his family are talking about going. And I believe the Lord will see there. So we pray for that building. Uh, just want to know that's the will of God. That's the main thing. And so you pray about that if you will. Uh, let's see, in seven weeks for our meeting, I didn't believe Brother Ben said. So remember that. We've got a lot. Got some things done this weekend. We got the little deck built on the back of the building. We got uh, a few things on the cabinets fixed, and still got some more stuff to do. But hopefully, we won't have to have too much of a work night stuff. Uh, it seems like things are kind of progressing, so we won't have to have one until we have to. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have one right before the meeting, like we normally do, and do the last minute cleaning and all that good stuff. And, getting everything ready. So we've got a few other projects we want to do. Uh, but, uh, hopefully we've still got enough time to get them done without having to have a big work. Well, we go. yes. All right. Uh, anybody else got something to mention tonight? I think friend Pat called and she asked that we pray for her family, Cindy, Terry, Summer, and the baby all have that chrome that junk. I think, I think Summer's in the hospital and Cindy needs to be gone, but she's too young.
and uh, we'll hope you'll take time to read it when it gets posted. Uh, they're, they're back to having face-to-face -face meetings. They've been shut down as well. And uh, they, they're they able to hold 50 people. They can put 50 people in there with all the regulations. So. And, uh, but evidently, he's got more than 50 people because they can't all get together. So that's, like, that's a good problem to have, right? And uh, so they're back to that, and, and God is blessing in that. Um, they still have them do the social distance type stuff. But, uh, but uh, one, one thing I wanted to read uh, I thought was a blessing. He said, I received a phone call from an elderly lady who helps head up the school ministry in our area asking me if I would be willing to preach, teach, and an assembly of high school children. I, of course, told her I would be glad to do that. Please pray that this would eventuate and the Lord will give me wisdom. So what an open door that is to be able to walk into a public high school and preach the gospel to a bunch of high school kids. Amen. And so you pray for Brother Gaddis and his family. Um, and God will help them. I haven't seen them in a long time. I'd love to see them. But uh, they, they've been on the field for, what, 20 years or more now. And uh, we appreciate the Lord allowing us to continue to support them all these years. And you just continue to pray for them. We did take on a new missionary. Uh, this, we went ahead and sent them a check for this month. Uh, Brother Daniel Lane from uh, Nigeria. And uh, we'll try to get him on the board soon. Uh, we're running out of spaces on that particular board. I don't know what we're going to do. But uh, <coughs> pray for Brother Lane and his wife. One little child, his name is Ezekiel, and uh, you pray for them that God help them to finish their deputation, and that Lord get them to Abuja, Nigeria. And I was reading the other day in the news that Nigeria has got a whole lot of problems with Muslims killing Christians, and uh, I don't think it's so much in Abuja, but it is in the northern part of the country. And uh, so you pray for them that the Lord would watch over them as they go and keep them safe. All right, Romans chapter number four, and we'll just kind of go down through the scriptures, uh, verse to verse if we can, and go as far as we can. Uh, one good thing about preaching verse by verse and going through a book is that you can hook up and unhook about anywhere you need to or won't to. And uh, that's one good thing I like about doing that. And um, and the book of Romans is so full of stuff. I mean, if you're wanting to know about salvation, how to witness to someone, uh, how to strengthen your own faith, there's so many things that you can gain out about uh, reading and studying the book of Romans. Now, there will be some things in the book of Romans that you're going to go, I ain't real sure about that. I don't know what that's talking about. That's okay. Uh, don't don't freak out when you when you run up on the scripture that man I don't have a clue what that's talking about. Uh, pray over it, read it a few times, and if God don't give you some light, keep going. And uh, maybe next time through, God will give you some light on it. Uh, God, you don't have to know everything to witness to someone. You don't have to know how. I mean, you can tell them what happened to you. And you can take a few scriptures just like out of Romans chapter number 3 that we dealt with last time. You can go out of Romans chapter 3 and give somebody everything they need to be saved. Yeah. They're talking about sinfulness. They're talking about how uh, to obtain righteousness. All of it's in chapter number 3. And so as you study the book of Romans, uh, let it be a whole uh, and, and yet study it verse by verse. Don't, don't contradict yourself trying to pick out a verse and take it out of context. Keep it in context. Now, Romans chapter 4. Uh, we want to look here. Uh, just a quick reminder in chapter 3. Uh, we found that, that God, He is the God of the Jew and the Gentile. That's what it said in Romans chapter number 3, verse 29. Is He the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles only. Thank God, uh, also, thank God, he's the God of the Jew and the Gentiles. 
We found out that all have sinned. Now we all knew that. I understand that. Everybody in this room has heard that preached. I don't know how many times. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. But can I say you can't know that enough. When you're talking to someone about the Lord, they need to come to an understanding that they know that they personally are a sinner. There's no need to be saved if you're not sinful. Then we learn also redemption is in Christ. Look in uh, verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, what a full chapter, chapter 3 was as we looked at it. Now let's go to chapter number 4. He, he is going to deal with the subject of justification by faith uh, primarily in this chapter. And he's talking about Abraham throughout just about the whole chapter. And, and it is in my mind that, uh, that he is trying to reach out to the Jewish people, his people. Paul was a Jew, wasn't he? He was reaching out to his people and trying to show them that just because they're Jewish doesn't mean they got a free ticket to heaven. He's trying to show them that, that faith is the way to go. You can't keep a law to get to heaven. And the Jews are pretty, pretty adamant about that kind of stuff most of the time. Um, and so are a lot of other religions. <laughs> uh, a lot of Baptists I know. Well, if you'll do this, this, and this, you're fine. They're trying to keep a law or keep a tradition to try to get this this uh, this uh, ticket or, or or this free pass, if you will, into heaven. And that is not the way the Scripture teaches. And so he's going to give Abraham as an illustration here and try to show the Jews that that what happened in Abraham's life. When God saved him. When God dealt with him. Now let's look at verse 1. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found. He's asking a question. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So he asks a question in verse 1. He answers the question in verse number 3. What did he find? He found that believing God would count for him to be righteous. Faith is the way to go. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, Hebrews chapter number 11. So he asks the question in verse 1. He answers the question in verse 3. Now where does that come from? It says, for what saith the Scripture? Brother Van Coker was here uh, a few weeks back, our first part of June. What did he preach on? What saith the Scripture, didn't he? You remember that? He, what saith the Scripture? So let's go back in the Scripture. Where did this come from? Look in Genesis chapter number 15. When we're doing verse by verse, we want to kind of look at this kind of stuff. So we would know where this would come from. Uh, uh, Paul is giving the, the Romans, the Jewish Romans, and Gentiles, if you will, uh, answers from the Scripture. What saith the Scripture? Genesis chapter number 15 and verse number 1, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, the one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Now verse 6 is very important. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to 
to him for righteousness. He believed. What did Abraham do? What law did he keep? He didn't keep the law. He believed what God said. What did God say? I'm going to give you a seed. Look up in the heavens. Look at the stars. Your seed is going to be more than that. God. He took God's word for it. How did he become righteous? Okay. That's where that scripture comes from. Is what he's talking about in Romans chapter number 4. Abram believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Let me ask you a question. Has God kept that promise? If you go back to the Holocaust, there were six million, I think, Jews killed just in the Holocaust. Today, I, I haven't looked at the figures of, of recent, but there are millions of Jews in the land of Israel. There's two, three million in America. I think. I mean, he, he got a lot of ancestors. Uh, he got a lot out there, doesn't he? God has kept His promise. God's word can be trusted is what I'm saying. No. If God said it, you can believe it. You can count on it. Abram did. God counted What a blessing. Now he talks about works versus grace. Verse number four. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. So if I have to work my way to heaven, that means God owes me. And God ain't going to love me. If I'm trying to work my way to heaven, that means God's got to pay me. Because of what I've done. That ain't the way God does things. That is nowhere in this book. Now there is a certain sect of Christianity in our day and time that is trying to teach that the Old Testament saints got saved by works and the New Testament saints get saved by grace. That ain't so. If you study Romans chapter number 4, how can you believe that? How can you say when he is using Abram as the illustration uh, of faith brings righteousness? And it wasn't by works. No man has ever been saved by works. By faith. I mentioned that man this morning by the name of uh, uh, Winton, Mr. Winton. Nicholas Winton. Saved 669 children out of Czechoslovakia. Jewish children. He's an Englishman. He was a Gentile, and just out of a good character and charitable spirit, he gave nine months of his life to save as many children as he could save. All of his resources. He did everything he could to save them kids. But let me tell you something. That's not going to get him into heaven. Those works were good works. They were good deeds. But nobody has ever been or ever will be saved by good works. I'm thankful for a man that has good works. But I'm not God. God has made the rule that you are saved by grace through faith. That's what he is teaching in Romans chapter. Eight. God don't owe me anything. I got saved by grace. And, the, and it was through this faith that he's talking about. Verse 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, watch this saying, his faith is counted for righteousness. What does God count for righteousness? Faith. Not his work. If Mr. Uh, Nicholas Winton, when we get to heaven, if Mr. Nicholas Winton is in heaven, he will be there 
<coughs> by the grace of God, and he exercised faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Faith. His faith is counted for righteousness. All my righteousness is as filthy righteousness. Very filthy righteousness. But Christ's righteousness. Now verse 6. Again, he's going to bring some Scripture out. Paul is using Scripture to teach you. Even as David also described it, this blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without what? Word. What does impute mean? It means to charge to. It means to, to give to. If God is going to give you righteousness, it's not going to be by your works. Never has been. He justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. God imputes righteousness without works. For by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourself, but the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now I realize I'm teaching things that most of y'all already know. But I don't think you can hammer this enough. I, I really don't. There's so many people in our day, and, and it's always been this way, are trying their best to work their way to heaven. If you read some of the comments under Nicholas Winton's name and uh, the documentary, and you would see people would say things like, if any man ever deserved, it's him. And listen, I'm all for rewarding him for what he's done. But heaven is not gained by works. It's gained by faith. Verse 7 saying, Blessed are the whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So let's go back to where this is taught in the Old Testament. Psalms chapter 32. Uh, Paul is, has quoted uh, in Genesis what Moses wrote about Abraham. And now he is quoting what David said in the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter number 32. Now if the Old Testament saints got saved by works, why would he be teaching in the New Testament and using Old Testament verses? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Because Old Testament saints weren't saved by works. They were saved through faith. That's who he is using. Abraham, David, they were saved by faith. Now, Psalms 32, verse 1, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no God. So he quotes him in the scripture. Or he quotes the Romans and the Jews and the Gentiles in Rome. This is how a person is forgiven. If you have if you work for it, you don't need forgiveness. You're owed something. That makes sense? Only forgiven sinners get to go to heaven. And if you work for it, there's no need for forgiveness. It's being owed to you. There's God will be paying you a debt. God don't owe you anything. God will never owe you anything. He is showing them through the Scriptures that faith is how you obtain righteousness. Verse number 9. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Now he's going to do, deal with Jew and Gentile. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. He's repeating himself in different ways, isn't he? He's saying the same thing over and maybe changing it, and, and, but saying the same thing. 
Faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned in verse 10? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Now this is a big deal for the Jew. It's a big deal for the Muslim too, by the way. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. When did Abraham believe God? Before the circumcision. And he was counted righteous before that. He's trying to, to prove a point here to the Jew and the Gentile. Abraham believed God before this act. Now let's notice what this act this is for. Verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been un. So what is circumcision? It's a sign. It's a sign. That's all it is. It's a sign. Let's put it in our day and time. How do many Baptists, many different denominations, Church of Christ, and different places, uh, different religions, e even people in India do it. They, they take baptism for salvation, don't they? But what is baptism? It's a sign. It's the same thing. Baptism is a sign of what's already taken place. And he is showing them here, the Jews and the Gentiles. Abram was counted righteous before this act of circumcision. Middle of verse 11. That he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. One of the big problems in the church of Galatia, the Judaizers came up to Galatia and started teaching. Okay, you believe in Christ, but you've got to be circumcised too, you say. That's being refuted here. He refutes it in the book of Galatians as well. You cannot take an external act, an ex external work, and obtain an internal righteousness. The baptismal pool does not wash away the sin on the inside. Right. It can't get to that. Now the circumcision of the flesh cut away what's wrong in the heart. We learned last week, uh, or the week before, I can't remember, that it was of the heart, not, not of the flesh. It's a sign. He already has the faith that has counted him righteous. Verse 12, And the Father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Now I'm trying to put myself into the, the, the Jewish religion and what they've been taught all their life, how this is getting under their skin. You remember he goes to synagogue after synagogue after synagogue. What does he preach? He preaches Christ for righteousness. Some of them receive him. Some of them hate him. Why? Because they're trying to work their way to heaven. And Christ does away with that. Christ does away with working your way to be righteous. That means all my religious deeds and all my religious acts that I did before I was saved don't mean nothing. That's kind of hard to swallow when you're a very religious person. I would say especially as a Jew. As Moses said, they are still there. Thank God one day He's going to turn their hearts. Amen. Yeah. Thank God for that. Yeah. Now, for, for verse 14. 
For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. So if, if we have to work there, uh, if we have to keep the law to be saved, there's no need for faith and there's no need for the promise of God. Because the law worketh wrath. But there, where there is no where no law is, there is no transgression. Verse 16. I like this verse. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. And not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith. Abraham, which is the father of us all. What is he doing? He's bringing the Gentiles and the Jew together. It takes faith in Christ to be saved. If you're a Jew, you've got to have faith in Christ. If you're a Gentile, you've got to have faith in Christ. By the way, this book was written by Jews, wasn't it? Not the whole thing. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. Wasn't able to have children, that's what that was about. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God, through unbelief, but was, in, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. What gave Abraham his righteousness? Faith. God said he was strong in faith. <clears throat> what a testimony. Wouldn't it be, be, be a wonderful testimony to have on your tombstone one day? Strong in faith. Boy, that would be a blessing. He believed God. He's using Abram to teach us something here. He's using David. He's using the Scripture. Verse 21, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. What did he do? He just believed God. He believed God for what he said. What is faith? Believe in God for what He says. Therefore it was imputed to Him for righteousness in verse 22. Now it was not written for His sake alone that it was imputed to Him. I like this, verse 24, but for us also. Why did God write this? For Abraham? Yeah, but for us too. To whom it shall be imputed. If. And that's a bit, you remember we preached that message years ago? A little word with a big man. If is a big word, though it only be two letters. Righteousness will be imputed to you. You can have the righteousness of God. How? If you believe. He says, if we believe on Him, that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. How does a person get saved? They believe God. Oh, what he said. He said, I sent my Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die in your place for your sin. When he died, he was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Took his blood and he applied the mercy seat in heaven. Amen. Yeah. And therefore, if I believe that, I can be righteous. 
you to be righteous. I do all that. Praise God. There's a lot of folks, don't they? A lot of folks still trying to work there. I would, I would dare say that there's some folks in our church that still struggle with that. That think, well, I'm not as bad as so and so. I should be okay. It's the same thing, isn't it? You're trying to compare yourselves among yourselves. You're trying to judge yourself by your what? Works. That ain't going to get you to heaven. No. The only thing that gets people into heaven is faith. Yeah. The right kind of faith. You'll hear it very generically used in the news. People of faith. Faith in what? Faith in a statue? Faith in a religion? No, we have to have faith in Christ. That little song we taught the kids so many years ago. There's only one way. One way to heaven. That way is Jesus. Faith in Jesus Christ. Christ died for you and was raised again for our justification. How does that happen? Do you have to have, do you have to become a Jew to have that? No. Do you have to become this to do it? No. Do you have to be baptized? No. Do you have to be, take communion? No. Not to be saved, you don't. Do you have to speak in tongues? All those things are outward things that you do. Right. <clears throat> trying to keep some religious right. Ceremony. That ain't nothing but works. Brother Jim testified when he uh, got saved. He, he got saved in a, in a service and center type of thing. Uh, and was run by Pentecostals. He'd already heard enough truth to know what was right and wrong. And when he went to pray, they all prayed around him and they were hoping he was going to speak in tongue. And they were saying, did he get it? Did he get it? He didn't get it. Because he didn't speak in tongue. What did he do? He got out of there and came to the church. <laughs> he got saved. Amen. He believed on Christ. That's all it is. Faith in Christ. Yeah. Faith in Christ. That's what's saying. And he illustrates that so wonderfully here with the book of Romans. Chapter number four. We're using Abraham and what David said and what God did in their lives. Are you saved? If you're saved tonight, you're saved by grace through faith. And that alone. Nothing added to or taken away. Don't be like Galatia and listen to them Judaizers. Well, I don't even know what a Judaizer is. Uh, they're a religious person. Let's we'll put it that way. There'll probably be somebody in your life that's going to try to tell you how to be saved a different way. The Jehovah Witness is going to come by and try to tell you something different. They're going to try to tell you, well, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. The Church of Christ is going to say, well, you've got to come to our church, be baptized by one of our churches. Our church is free. You can't be saved outside the church of Christ is what they teach you. That ain't what that said, though, is it? Right. That book didn't say nothing about that. That book said you're saved by grace through faith. Not faith in their church, but faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. What Jesus did for you. The Catholic Church is going to teach you, well, if you'll take this communion, You'll get confirmed. You'll do this. You'll do that. Then, then you're okay. And if just in case, we'll light some candles for you and we'll give some money to the church to get you out of purgatory just in case. <laughs> Salvation is by grace through faith. If you're trying to talk to someone about Jesus, about the whole thing, 
Sometimes it's hard to get across. Just tell them what God did for you. Tell them you were a sinner. And God in His grace came and dealt with your heart and drew you and you trusted Him to be your salvation. Go to Romans chapter number 3. Show them in the Scripture for all of us. Show them in the Scripture that Christ, His blood is the propitiation for our sins. He is what redeems us. Amen. It is that simple. Okay. Alright, I'm going to stop there. Romans chapter 4. Alright, the Lord willing, Wednesday night we'll be back at uh, 6.30. And uh, we'll be regular church service at 6.30. Looking forward to what the Lord has for us. If you want to go to the meeting tomorrow night, please let me know. Or go to Howard know. So we can get together and get times and rides, all that stuff together. Uh, I understand most of you have to work. I, I get that. But uh, if you want to go, please let us know. Brother Harris will be probably even here around 4 o'clock. And uh, if there's enough people, we'll drive the bus. If not, he's going to drive his van. And we're going to drive from Tyler Lake. But uh, if there's enough people to go, we'll meet together, take the bus, and we'll all go together. Okay? All right. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. We're with you.
You can carry more guns. There it is, what I do. He carries whatever kind of thing you have at home. And then he carries a shield that has a shotgun or a shotgun. That's what I have. I like the submachine guns. I like the submachine guns, but I can just do this, and eventually it'll hit them. Oh, I don't need my pro controller. I know, I accepted the family party. I'm not saying that you bought every I have a I have Are they just over there? Nobody uses them? Can I have them? Can I stick my mustache until people steal them? I bought them. Seven. It's the last year, about two, two months. I need a PlayStation 5. I bought them. When I buy a PlayStation 5, it's fine. I get off. Take a shower. Okay. I suggested that. She got five. I don't like seeing that. She usually does 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 that.